Hey, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're gonna to be shooting something a lot of people have wanted to see, Federal Terminal Ascent 130 grain out of a 6.5 Creedmoor. And here is the box, that Federal Premium Terminal Ascent. I'll flip it around. It's got your ballistics data. It's got your promo information. You can pause and zoom in and read that stuff if you want. But let's take a look at some of the ammo, see what it looks like. Federal ammo always comes in these plastic little holders. And I think you're supposed to be able to use them like on your belt. It's got like these little belt loopy things. That seems pretty hokey to me, but whatever. Nickel plated brass, I guess maybe nickel plated bullet. I'm not really sure. Probably says on the back of the box I didn't read it. But really good looking stuff right here. And the test rifle today is going to be my Ruger American chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Of course, we've got a 22 inch barrel up top. I've got a Leopold VX Freedom 3 to 9 by 40. And bringing up the rear, of course, I've got one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. This rifle's name is Pig Ugly. You can kind of see it behind the cartridges there. Check out my website, masonleather.com, to get one for yourself. I would love to make you one. And I want to show you over here on the other side, we've got my wild boar design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we're down here at the blocks after shooting that Federal Premium Terminal Ascent out of the 6.5 Creedmoor. It did slap the front block around quite a bit, but it is getting hot out, so I went ahead and just rearranged them so we can look at penetration i wound up capturing two bullets the third one went somewhere outside the block i do not know where it went but we got some just fantastic penetration it looks like that one bullet down at the bottom is right about 26 a little over 26 they'll call it 26 and a quarter inches and that bullet up top is about 26 and three quarter inches and we'll come over and look at the front block and it looks like the bullets open up pretty quick and create a pretty good wound cavity, but it is a bit shallower than some of the other ammo we have seen. It looks like between about two inches and six or seven inches. We'll give it seven inches. It goes out a little bit to eight, but between really two and seven inches, you have a pretty good wound cavity. And then it's like it closes up a little bit and the bullets just penetrate and penetrate and penetrate. And let's take a look at the velocities for that Federal Premium Terminal Ascent out of the 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh, we got some good velocity, it looks like. Our high was 28.49, our low was 28.24, and our average was 2,839 feet per second. And here we're looking at that Federal Premium Terminal Ascent 130 grain bullet recovered from the ballistics gel. These things just look cool when I yanked them out. First we'll talk about weight retention. Respectively, we saw 128 grains and 130 grains of weight retention for an average of 129 grains. That's 99% retained weight. Absolutely insane, incredible performance. Now I'll talk about expanded diameter. We saw 0.68 inches and 0.68 inches for the two recovered bullets. They are exactly the same. That works out to 2.6x expansion. That is well beyond my benchmark of 2x expansion for most hunting calibers these bullets seem to really be something special and now we're going to talk about velocity and we're about to see something that i have not seen in any load that i have tested so far the high velocity was 2849 feet per second the low was 2824 feet per second for an average of 2839 feet per second now the surprising thing is that the factory build velocity for these was 2825 feet per second our average speed was faster than that. We were 14 feet per second faster on average than the factory build velocity. I have never once seen that in any ballistics gel test I've done so far, any velocity test. I don't know what to say here. This is absolutely insane. And then on to the penetration front, this is another area these bullets just blew everything out of the water. We saw 26 and a quarter inches and 26 and three quarter inches respectively 
for an average of 26 and a half inches of penetration. So not only did these penetrate deep, but they were incredibly consistent. These things just performed across the board better than I could have ever imagined. All right, y'all, final thoughts on the Federal Premium Terminal Ascent 130 grain 6.5 Creedmoor load. Y'all, I don't know what Federal's doing over there, but whatever it is, it's working. Everything just works. Terminal Ascent, Blue, block, blue Box Power Shock, I flubbed it there. Um, Federal Fusion, every bullet they put out just performs incredibly. And if you're looking for arguably the best 6.5 Creedmoor hunting load on the market, I think we found it. Let's go over the notes here. We're looking at 99% weight retention, 2.6x expansion. So not only did it retain almost 100% of its weight, but it expanded and blew up like a mushroom also. It's gonna cause a lot of damage going through game. And not only that, but somehow we managed 26 inches of penetration also. Absolutely incredible. And then with this particular ammo, this per the particular shots that I took, we got higher than factory rated velocity out of a 22 inch barrel. How that happened, I don't know, was this box just slightly hotter than other ammo out there, who knows? I will definitely be testing more terminal ascent ammo in the future. I've actually got a box of it in 270 Winchester. I'll be filming that coming up, so stay tuned for that. Every caliber that Terminal Ascent is available in, I will be testing because this stuff is just insane. I mean, if I was using 6.5 Creedmoor as my primary hunting rifle, it's not. I typically use 30 out 6 myself, 30 out 6, 270, and 243 the most these days. But if I was using 6.5 Creedmoor, I would be using Federal Terminal Ascent. If I was going out west, if I was going up into the northwest to hunt sheep, goats, a lot of people say that they hunt elk with 6.5 Creedmoor. I personally wouldn't do it. I want a little more, a little more bang for the buck, a little more power. But if I was going to, this would be the ammo that I would use. All right, y'all. So at the very beginning of the video, I put up some text saying that I have something to say about this 1,000 yard claim that's on the back of this box. And it's not so much that that's on the back of the ammo box, but that does perpetuate the problem. It's this idea that the 6.5 Creedmoor is a truly long range hunting cartridge capable of 1,000 yard shots on game animals. And I think we got to quit. We got to put the crack pipe down and quit pretending like this cartridge is anything more than it is. It is not particularly powerful at any range. This particular ammo did perform incredibly well. If I'm gonna hunt with a 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm gonna use this ammo. The farthest shot that I might take with it is four or 500 yards, and that's only if I practice a lot, and I can guarantee I can get a good hit at those distances, which the overwhelming majority of people cannot. The overwhelming majority of people don't have access to a shooting range that's more than 100 yards. So there's a whole bunch of perpetuation these days of this long, this ultra long range shooting and hunting. And really there's not that many people doing it successfully. But what happens is people see that and then they go and try it and they shoot things in the butt. They shoot an elk in the leg. They outright miss. They hit and wound an animal because a lot of this ammo, a lot of these cartridges have no business taking game at anything beyond or even approaching six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand yards. The energy's not there. The ballistics are not there. It may look pretty on a box. It may do fine in a long range shooting competition, but to be hunting game animals at these extended insane ranges is ridiculous. It's completely irresponsible. Barring maybe the hunters that actually practice at those distances consistently and can actually make hits on target. And again, maybe barring the use of actual long range cartridge, something that's actually capable of putting a heavy bullet with some energy downrange at those distances, something like a 300 Winchester Magnum at the absolute minimum, something like a 338 Lapua, something like that. The 6.5 Creedmoor, in my opinion, and that's all any of this is, this little post video rant, all the, any of this is, is my own opinion. Feel free to disagree with it if you want. Go nuts in the comments, I don't care. But it's ridiculous. This whole perpetuation of ultra long range hunting, 
I think it's irresponsible, and I'm going to stand on that. Because for every successful shot on a game animal at some ridiculously ludicrous distance, there's another shot taken that's not successful that wounds that thing or is a complete miss or hits the freaking cow elk right next to it. I've read the stories and heard the tales. It's what's actually going on. And it's not because there aren't a very select few hunters that can actually do it successfully. It's because everybody else and their uncle and their brother sees this handful of people doing it and perpetuating it. And then they go and try it and get into a world of trouble. We owe more than that to the game animals that we hunt. We owe more than that to ourselves. And I think hunters as a whole need to do better in regards to the ethical distances that we set for ourselves in our hunting. And that type of advertising on the back of ammo boxes doesn't help any of this. We got to be realistic with the math too. If you take the 6.5 Creedmoor and you do the math out to a thousand yards, that bullet's not hitting with any more energy than a weak 357 Magnum at that distance. There is nobody has any business taking a shot at a big game animal at that distance with something with the energy of a 357 magnum it's complete hogwash so by all means let me know what you think in the comments about all this i think there's a lot more people out there that believe this and are willing to say it but i'm willing to say it so let me know what you think hey if you enjoy these videos check out my website masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you i've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and i would love to make you something the link is in the video description and check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests